Hi guys, it is a dark, gray, gloomy winter day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization outside the paradise <coughs> of Inverness, Florida, <coughs> where we have made it here to Thursday, January 30th, 2020, and uh, you have stumbled in to Collapse Chronicles here in this, this weird little corner of YouTube, and I am Sam Mitchell, and I'm doing what I do every day to kick off uh, another day in the Collapse, and that's bringing you today's Chronicle of the Collapse right here on today's mainstream media news, uh, on Yahoo News, uh, from this outfit called National Interest. National Interest. I'm a little... I need to do some digging about who these folks are, but what they mostly do is uh, analyze the various military threats uh, all over the planet, <clears throat> but particularly the U.S. They analyze all the different... Uh, military hotspots, and so this is just their, the, their defense editor himself, a guy by the name of David Axe, I love that name, David Axe, so what David is talking about here is the rising threat of nuclear war. You know, this, the, the nuclear war threat just hanging over all the other threats. I need to check in. I like to check in maybe about once a month on what's going on. So, uh, and what is the latest report from National Interest? We find that 54% of millennials believe a nuclear war will occur in the next decade. Okay, drum roll please. Does your old collapsitarian Sam Mitchell believe a nuclear war will occur in the 2020s? Uh, am I 100? I certainly do not rule out a, a nuclear war with all of the hot spots. Uh, am I ready at this point to predict that nuclear war will break out in the 2020s? I just, I, I just don't have a feeling strong enough. Uh, I do not on any level rule out uh, the fact that we could <clears throat> see a nuclear war erupt in the 2020s. So I guess you can put me in with the Millennials. All right. <clears throat> the International Committee of the Red Cross surveyed 16,000 Millennials between the ages of 20 and 35 in 16 countries. Yes, uh, to get this. All right. <clears throat> A majority of the world's millennials now believe it is more likely than not that a nuclear attack will occur in the next 10 years. They're not alone in their fear. The nonprofit Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists recently moved its infamous doomsday clock to 100 seconds to midnight signaling experts growing concern over Earth's future. <clears throat> so the International Committee of the Red Cross surveyed 16,000 millennials between the ages of 20 and 35 in 16 countries, quoting their uh, report, quote, more than half of millennials, 54%, believe it is likely that a nuclear attack will occur in the next decade. Uh, let's see, I'm not sure who Alex Ward is. They give no identification to the fellow they're quoting. I'm assuming 
uh, who Alex Ward is, is some sort of spokesman behind this survey for the Red Cross, it would be really nice if the editors at National Interest had identified the man they're quoting. But anyway, whoever Alex Ward is, quote, <clears throat> The fear of a nuclear attack seems to be a trend. The worldwide shudder is understandable. The chance of a nuclear conflict between the U.S. and North Korea is not entirely gone. India and Pakistan, two nuclear-armed enemies, could rekindle their decades-long squabble at any time. I think India and Pakistan have never settled their decades-long squabble in Kashmir. But anyway, uh, somebody needs to tell Alex Ward that. And the U.S. and Russia the world's foremost nuclear powers have had warheads pointed at each other since the earliest days of the Cold War. Close. That's the end of the quote from the mysterious Alex Ward. Back to Mr. Axe. <clears throat> Plus, there is the increasing likelihood that Iran soon will develop its first atomic weapon. Iran, on January 5th this year, announced it would no longer inter honor international restrictions on its enrichment of uranium, a key process in the production of nuclear weapons. That announcement came just three days after U.S. President Donald Trump ordered the killing of Major General Qasem Soleimani, the head of Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps militia, and one of the country's top military leaders. <clears throat> Iran's, according to the New York Times, I guess, according to this article in the New York Times, Iran's announcement regarding uranium enrich enrichment, quote, essentially sounded the death knell, close quote, of the 2015 nuclear agreement that then U.S. President Barack Obama negotiated in order to keep Tehran from obtaining its first nuclear weapon. Trump in 2018, as I'm sure we all remember, unilaterally withdrew the U.S. from the nuclear deal, weakening it without totally destroying it. Iran, Russia, China, France, Germany, the U.K., and the European Union remained parties to that accord. Lifting, but now, I get, you know, now Iran is saying... Screw the accord. <clears throat> Lifting limits on enrichment of uh, the you know uranium leaves very little of that nuclear deal in effect. Quoting the uh, again the New York Times article, quote. It largely recreates conditions that led Israel and the United States to consider destroying Iran's facilities a decade ago, again bringing them, meaning Israel and the U.S., closer to the potential of open conflict with Tehran that was avoided by the accord, close quote. <clears throat> Prior to Iran lifting limits on enrichment, experts estimated it would take that country a year to produce enough material for an atomic warhead. If Iran takes the next logical step and builds up its stockpile of enriched uranium, the timeline for producing a nuke could shrink from a year to mere months, and at that point, war with Iran could escalate into a nuclear war. 
Ban Ki-moon, the South Korean former Secretary General of the UN, stressed the need for better relations between the world's two biggest nuclear powers, the U.S. and Russia, quoting uh, Bon, quote, their relationship is not a good one, huh? They're not talking to each other about how to deal with a lack of of nuclear disarmament architecture. Their relationship has been shrouded in mistrust, denial, and counter-argument. I am very concerned about a situation where nuclear wars and conflict can happen." Close quote. Trump who, of course, <clears throat> if you're not aware of this, is running for re-election in 2020, don't get me going on that, has loosened the rules governing America's use of atomic weapons and unilaterally has withdrawn the U.S. from several nuclear treaties. Trump's administration currently is negotiating with the Russian government over the fate of the New Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, otherwise known as START. New START, which caps the American and Russian nuclear arsenals each at 1,550 deployed atomic warheads, expires in February 2021. I love that. Limits each country to 1,550 atomic warheads, and now they're going to throw that out. Uh huh. <clears throat> Some experts worry that Trump intends to abandon New START, thus potentially walking away from parity, yeah, parity, 1,500 to 1,500, as a guiding principle. Trump has called for the U.S. to greatly grow its atomic arsenal. <clears throat> this is Mary Robinson, the president of Ireland. Uh, she's, in, um, she's involved with this doomsday clock. One of these, she's involved with the Bureau of Atomic Scientists in some stature. That's, that's why they're quoting Mary Robinson here. Quote, we are in a stage of total denial. The doomsday clock has been moved nearer than ever, nearer than at the height of the Cold War, close quote. So you do understand, never in history has the doomsday clock been closer to midnight than it is right now. Robinson mentioned nuclear war and climate change as the top risks. Uh, quote, we have two existential threats, threats to our very existence, and we have a very fragile multilateral system that has become weaker because of a lack of leadership, close quote. So who is David Axe? David Axe serves as the defense editor of the National Interest. He is also the author of three graphic novels, War Fix, War is Boring, and Machete Squad. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so there you are, guys. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, if you enjoyed what David Axe has to tell you about the chance of you and your family going up in a mushroom cloud in the 2020s, please spend a few seconds to thumb up this video. If you do not like what David Axe has to tell you about you and your family going up in a mushroom cloud in the next 10 years, spend a few seconds to download it. And by all means, do subscribe over here to Collapse Chronicles 
where we hit one million views yesterday. The future is so dark, <clears throat> we have to wear shades at, uh, at Collapse Chronicles and get out there and enjoy it while you still can before a mushroom cloud erupts in your living room. Bye, guys.